joined by the two astronauts, Commander Ken Ham and astronaut Pierce Sellers. Welcome to you both, and thank you so much for coming. It's fair to say, isn't it, Ken, that that, that flight was a complete success. That's true. It was a success. Uh, of course, with all missions, we don't know if it's going to be a success no. beforehand, so we trained for a very long time. Uh, we trained for about a year on all of our specific tasks, on how to do spacewalking, robotics, and of course, flying the space shuttle safely. Spacewalking must be quite incredible. Did you ever think you'd do it? I always wished I would do it, but they won't let me do it <laughs> because I'm a driver of the space shuttle. Different union. This man is in the union. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I think driving a space shuttle is rather different from flying a jet. Yeah, it's similar, but different. A spaceship can move in all six axes and a jet can't. And that's sort of the, the biggest difference, if you will. What exactly were you doing? Can I come first to you, please, Ken? Sure, I can give you a, a quick synopsis, if you will, of the yeah. mission. It starts with the launch in Florida, where we're all sitting at uh, the speed we're going right now, which happens to be a thousand miles an hour with respect to the center of the Earth, of course. And then eight and a half minutes later, after liftoff, we're going 17,500 miles an hour. That's a ridiculous acceleration rate. It's kind of interesting that your brain can actually integrate. It senses that acceleration over time. It's so fast that you can't really describe it adequately. And uh, the experience of launch, the vibration, the feeling of power, the looking out the window as the sky goes from blue to black is absolutely incredible. And then uh, once we're on orbit, we have to turn this rocket ship into a spaceship, which is a different kind of a, a beast. And it takes uh, a good day to turn the rocket ship into a spaceship. So now it's our habitable floating volume that we guide through space. And then we begin the process of rendezvousing with the space station, which is a remarkable feat in and of itself. Uh, we use star trackers for navigation. We use uh, an onboard radar to lock on to the space station. And some of that pointing information goes into the guidance computers on board the space shuttle to help us target multiple, multiple burns to adequately uh, adjust our trajectory to come up to about 2,000 feet away from space station, where we take over manually and actually fly the space shuttle up to uh, the space station. Mm -hmm. The final docking, the tolerances for a successful docking, plus or minus three inches. Uh so when you think about where you came from down on the planet and how fast you're going, to pull all, all, all that together and make this rendezvous happen is really an incredible feat. He's, he's almost, he's underselling it really because it's, he, sure he was he driving, is. so he's being modest. I'm sure uh, he is. Uh, yeah. That's right. So uh, the, you know, critical things are to do are not to damage space station, which is easy to do with plumes of, from, the, from the, the shuttle. So we inhibit a lot of those and not to damage the shuttle either. So coming in very slowly too, about uh, uh, an inch, a, one inch per second, something like yeah, that. Yeah. And this, you know, big 120 ton spacecraft coming in to dock the space station very gently. Didn't even spill my coffee. You know. <laughs> nice job. What did that be your your main role? After we'd arrived and rendezvoused the space station, we all piled oh, in there and almost immediately got to work with the station Garrett crew. Reisman. There were six people already on board when we got there. We had three spacewalks to do and uh, a whole lot of robotic operations. Now, the spacewalks, we had uh, the three guys go out in teams of two, three times, and they went out to install a big new antenna to change out some batteries uh, for the solar arrays. So I think every day we were busy for about six, seven days. We were working flat out every day. How near completion is the station now? We're about done. I think the Russians are going to set up a big laboratory uh, in 2012. And I think one of the last big things that we're going to send up is a, a hardened cargo container that we're going to put on as like a storage closet. But really, the space station as you see it now is about 95% about complete, I think. And it's an incredible feat when you think about it. Uh, I went up there four years ago, uh, and it was less than half the size. And now there it is. I mean, it's immense. It's 500 tons, all the solar rays, huge sets of uh, uh, solar rays all over it. And you can see this thing for miles away when you're approaching it. It is, it is really quite the business. And what are the main workers carrying out? We're in the process of finishing up the assembly and uh, bedding down all the scientific equipment. What I, I think we're all hoping to see over the next few years is a switch over from the business of assembling and uh, tweaking uh, the hardware to scientific exploitation. We're hoping to really use the laboratories up there. And now what about the return, the entry, when you, you turn back into a glider? Yes. 
uh, this uh, this particular entry was visually amazing. On my last mission, uh, coming home was in daylight, just the way the orbit lined it up. And uh, in the high Mach numbers, the uh, atmosphere basically becomes plasma from the friction. And during the day, you can't really see the colors. So looking out the windows was looking out the inside of a fireball. It was brilliant orange and pink. It was beautiful. The other thing was that this really surprised me. I was up on the top deck with Ken during this uh, during entry, was that we are going very very fast at a pretty low altitude. So you see these thunderheads, you know, the big uh, storms over the Pacific, just whipping by the window. Uh, still doing what ten times the speed of sound or something. Well, yeah, the sensation of speed when you're on orbit up there, close to 300 miles or so, where you're going very fast you don't really get the sensation of speed mm -hmm. very much. You're looking down at the Earth just slowly gliding by. But once you do the deorbit burn, you begin to fall towards the Earth. You actually speed up. And by the time the orbiter is now a glider, an airplane again, and starts to aero capture, you're down to approximately 40 miles. So you go from 300 to 40 miles, much, much closer to the Earth, and you're going faster. So that sensation of speed that, yeah. that Pierce was uh, talking about is I was, I was amazed. Is crazy. Really amazed. Space Shuttle Atlantis now comes home to the Kennedy Space Center for the final time in 25 years. What's your main memory?